Pokemon games, for as exciting as the Pokemon make them, are nothing without the NPCs. The non-player characters obviously fill up the world and help bring it to life, and Pokemon's NPCs are known for being quite the colorful sort, which is why today we're going to put the focus on them and cover 10 crazy facts about the NPCs of the Pokemon world. Let's dive right in. One of the key moments of the Generation 1 games is when you have to navigate the Safari Zone in Fuchsia City in order to find the Gold Teeth, aka the dentures, of the Safari Zone Warden in order to get the HM for Strength, which is actually kinda gross when you think about it. Despite this quest seeming kind of odd though, its inclusion is actually one big reference to another game. In the game Mother, also known as Earthbound Beginnings in the West, there is also a character missing their dentures, which the player must find and return to their rightful owner in an almost identical fashion to Pokemon. This reference would have been very intentionally placed considering the developer of Mother was Ape Inc., who later became Creatures Inc., the company who owns a third of Pokemon's copyright and is often involved with various aspects of the Pokemon game's development. In Pokemon X and Y, there is a location known as the Battle Chateau, where the player can battle against a variety of NPCs. One of these is a maid named Julia, who, based on her dialogue, is very clearly a robot, surprisingly enough, which makes her the first robot Pokemon trainer in series history. Well, the first one that actually made the final games anyway. There were plans for a robot trainer in Pokemon Red and Green, the first games of the series, and he was known as Shinjuku Jack, but he unfortunately got cut from the final product. Additionally though, many of the other trainers in the Battle Chateau are actually named after various types of alcohol in Japanese. This is probably in reference to the Battle Chateau itself, as a chateau is oftentimes a place that produces wine. So that does check out for sure, but any kind of alcohol-related material in Pokemon games is always going to raise an eyebrow. Speaking of Kalos, another battle facility in this region is the Battle Mason. At the head of the Battle Mason are the Battle Chatelaines, and they consist of four trainers, Nita, Evelyn, Dana, and Morgan. In addition to their interesting attire, another interesting thing about these characters is that they are all actually named after different times of the day. Nita gets her name from nighttime, Evelyn from the evening, Dana from the daytime, and Morgan from the morning. Crossing the Poke Ocean to Unova, one notable NPC from this region is Charles, the motorcyclist. While in the games his role is fairly inconsequential, it's what he does in the anime that's more significant. Yes, he actually is lucky enough to have an anime counterpart as an NPC, and in the anime he's actually a superhero known as the Mighty Aselgard. In Japanese, his superhero name is Kaiketsu A. Gilder, which is probably a reference to Kaiketsu Zubat, a Japanese superhero-based TV show. You probably noticed the Zubat part of that name, and that's actually the interesting part of all of this, because the Kaiketsu Zubat TV show first aired in 1977, so almost 20 years before the first Pokemon games came out, meaning that it actually has nothing to do with Pokemon directly. They do both get their names from the same source though, coming from the word Zubato, which is a Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound of something directly hitting its target, and this makes the fact that Pokemon referenced Kaiketsu Zubat, even though it didn't have anything to do with Zubat at all, all the more ironic. In Pokemon Black and White 2, former members of Team Magma and Team Aqua can be found in Isarus City. The two are dating, but they aren't aware of the other's previous team membership. Additionally, there is also a former member of Team Rocket that can be found in Pokemon Black and White, and even a former Team Galactic member in Black and White 2 as well, although he is still part of an evil team with Team Plasma. These kinds of cameos on their own are interesting of course, but there's something else even more interesting that kind of ties them all together. 
While it is impossible to know if this was intentional or not, this could all be a reference to Unova's inspiration, the United States, and New York City, as many people over the years have come to the United States looking for a fresh start in life, similar to these ex-Evil team members, with New York in particular being a hot spot for people coming to America from other places. Whether intentional or not, this is just one more little detail that shows why Unova is amazing and also super underrated. Back to Gen 1, in Pokemon Yellow, there is a youngster on Route 9 who battles with a single Sand Shrew. Upon defeating him, he mentions that he's now going to have to start his 100 match winning streak all over again. With this taking place in Pokemon Yellow specifically, this is actually a direct reference to the anime, more specifically the character AJ, who was also on the cusp of a 100 battle winning streak with his Sandshrew upon his appearance in the anime in the episode The Path to the Pokemon League. Also in Pokemon Yellow, there is another NPC who is literally found floating in the air. Well, technically speaking. In Viridian Forest, there is a lass who is supposed to be walking amongst the tall grass, except she is standing entirely above it instead. This is a programming oversight, and it causes the NPC to be unable to walk around, meaning she can't be battled unless you walk up to her and talk to her yourself. Part of the reason Pokemon NPCs are so great is their dialogue, and sometimes NPCs even reference memes. For example, in Pokemon X and Y, there is an NPC who can be battled in the Battle Mason who says, Meow Meow, I can has battle meow? Which is a reference to the I can has cheeseburger meme, which is one of the earliest memes ever. In Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, meanwhile, just before the battle with Team Galactic in Jubilife City at the start of the game, one of the Team Galactic grunts says that he is going to cause massive damage to your double battle partner, who would either be Lucas or Dawn. This phrase is a comical reference to an infamous E3 presentation for the game Genji Days of the Blade, in which the phrase massive damage was spoken after a particularly memeable series of events and, well, yeah, it became a meme. And you attack its weak point for massive damage. What's funny though is that this occurred in 2006, not long before Diamond and Pearl released, which means the game's localizer, Nob Ogasawara, was paying attention and took immediate advantage. Nob wasn't done here though, as he had a particular amount of fun localizing Diamond and Pearl. In Veilstone City, the clown that gives you the coin case upon successfully answering his question will proclaim, a winner is you. This is a popular meme phrase that stems from a poor translation of the NES game, Pro Wrestling, which really just goes to show that Nob is an expert in the memes, especially cause he was doing this all the way back in the mid 2000s before memes ever really even caught on. The localizers of the Pokemon games continue to have fun though, even in the more recent titles. For instance, in Pokemon X and Y, a character named Phil the Photo Guy was introduced, who takes pictures of you throughout the game. In French, however, his name is Auto Focus, which honestly just might be the single greatest achievement in gaming, or even world history for that matter, and I honestly would really like to meet the person who came up with this, so I can shake their hand and tell them thank you. Yet another fact involving Pokemon X and Y, there is an NPC in Lumio City who will mention that the two Skiddo outside of Lumio Station were abandoned by their trainer, but still wait outside the station for their return. This sad little bit of background is actually most likely based on actual events. In Japan during the 1920s and 30s, there was a dog named Hachiko who would meet his owner at the local train station every day during his commute home from work. However, his owner unexpectedly passed away while at work one day and never met Hachiko at the station again. Despite this, Hachiko continued to go to the train station to wait for his owner's return, waiting there every day for nearly 10 years until the dog's death in 1935. The story has since become a legend in Japanese culture, explaining why it was likely referenced here in Pokemon X and Y.
So, there you have it! Those were some cool facts about Pokemon NPCs. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new for more Pokemon content all the time. You can also support the channel further by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and by checking out my Pokemon Cardinal series here on YouTube, both of which are immensely appreciated and make a huge difference. With that said though, I will see you all soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, thanks for watching, and I will smell you guys later.